heat transfer and specific heat. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is heat. And basically, heat is the transfer of energy from one body to another due to a difference in temperature. And it's also a measure of energy transfer. And so heat is actually measured in joules, which we have already talked about. Now, for a given object, the amount of heat involved is proportional to two things. And that is the mass of the object and the ch temperature change, which is represented with uh, delta T. So you can see that here. Now, we can write this out mathematically. So Q is proportional to mass times that change in temperature. Now, we want to make this into an equality, so we need something called a proportionality constant. Now, that proportionality constant is labeled as lowercase c, and it's called the specific heat capacity, or, you know, a little bit short, specific heat. So you'll see, you'll hear both of those, specific heat capacity or specific heat. So heat is equal to mass times that proportionality constant, specific heat capacity, times delta T. And this is the equation we're going to use for these types of problems. So, uh, so let's just look at this equation a little bit more. Um, and basically, if we know the specific heat of a material, so that's going to be a heat capacity that would often be given, or you'd be solving for it and you had everything else, then you can calculate the heat for a given change in temperature and mass. Now, when we want to measure the heat, we actually want some sort of system where we're not losing heat to the outside environment. And so we're going to pick something that's insulated so that the energy change goes into changing the temperature of the system rather than being leaked from the system and just diffusing out in the outside environment. And so that container is called a calorimeter. And when we measure these changes in enthalpy or energy, it's called calorimetry. So we can see here, we have a calorimeter. This is kind of a simple guy. It's two nested foam coffee cups. There's a cover there, there's a thermometer there, and then there's a stirrer, depending on what we're doing. Oftentimes we want a stirrer. So this is a simple calorimeter. Now, there's another example of, of heat transfer problems that we're gonna be doing in this class. And uh, that's the heat transfer between hot and cold substances. So let's say we have a high temperature substance. So let's make it a hot piece of metal. And we also have a low temperature substance, which is cool water. If we put the metal, the hot metal in the water, then heat is gonna flow from the metal to the water. And as that happens, the temperature of the metal is gonna decrease, it's gonna cool down, and the temperature of the water is gonna increase. And if we wait long enough, those two substances will have the same temperature. Now, if we put all of this into a calorimeter, then that means all this heat transfer occurs only between the two substances, so the, the metal and the water, and we're not losing or gaining any from the external environment. So under these ideal circumstances, we can write this net heat change as equal to zero. So whatever is, whatever is lost by the metal gained by the water, and both of those are gonna add up to zero. Now we can rearrange this and we can show that negative heat of the metal, so the metal's gonna lose heat, is gonna be gained by the water. Now, the magnitude of the heat change is the same for both of these guys. And it's really just the sign that shows us that the heat is going from the metal to the water. And so basically we could say that the, you know, that basically the heat flow is opposite for these substances. So the metal loses heat and the water gains heat. And so again, as I mentioned, since we're dealing with a piece of hot metal and cool water, then the negative sign is going to go with the metal part of the substance or the, the negative heat uh, because that metal is losing to the, the cool water. Now, when you're doing these types of problems, be sure to think about 
where the heat is going. So if you're anytime you're plunging a hot piece of hot metal into cool water, then the heat's going to go from the metal to the water. Okay, so this is just an illustration of what we were just talking about. So here's your calorimeter, okay, and there's your thermometer, and you're going to there's your hot metal and your cool water around it. And so you can see that heat is leaving that metal and going into the cool water. And you can see that the temperature of the water went up and now the water and the metal are at the same temperature. Okay, so let's do a quick little problem here. So we're gonna calculate the heat involved when 25 grams of iron increase in temperature from 22 degrees to 76 degrees C. And we're given the specific heat of iron as 0.449 joules per grams degree C. So go ahead and pause the video and use the equation to calculate the heat for this system. Okay, so the first thing we need to determine is our change in temperatures because that's gonna give us part of, basically part of our answer. And uh, the heat change, or the temperature change, sorry, is always gonna be the final value minus the initial value. So in this case, it's gonna be 76 degrees C minus 22 degrees C, and that's gonna give us a delta T of 54 degrees C. And so now that we have delta T, let's go ahead and plug everything into our equation for Q. Okay, so here's our mass of the metal. Okay, so Q is equal to M times small c times delta T. So here's the mass of the metal. There's the heat capacity, which was given to us. Here's the temperature change in degree C, and we're gonna get 606.15 joules. We only have two significant figures, so the lowest are gonna be two, so that's gonna give us 610 joules. Now, notice how the grams and the degree C cancel. So grams are gonna cancel with the mass, and degree C are gonna cancel with our temperature change and that's gonna leave us with only joules, which is a unit of heat. And also notice that we get a positive value because we're going up in temperature. So this metal is increasing in temperature, it's taking in heat, and so that means that energy is going into the system.